God is here. God is there right now with you, beside you, and this is your day. This is your opportunity to connect with Him and to allow Him to be king over your life. Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. We're starting a brand new series now and so you're going to be very blessed by our series. It's called Taboo and we're going to talk about stuff that we don't want to talk about. And we're going to start by talking today about our families. And we're going to talk about family secrets and, and how we can navigate towards those dark closets and doors and rooms that we don't want to enter. We don't want to let anyone. Anyway, I don't want, I want to stop. I, would just, I want you to be there and listen to this message that will change your life. I want us to park our hearts for just a moment and take 10 seconds to give back the glory where the glory belongs. Can we thank God for 10 seconds for all the ways that He's blessed you last month and last week? Is that okay? 10 seconds of praise. Are you ready? One, two, three, come on. Clap your hands. Give God some praise. Take it today. Come on. Clap our hands to God for being so good. How many people are happy to be here? Raise your hand and say, yeah. We also want to greet our online viewers, those who are tuned in through our TV networks, FB Live, Kerygma TV, and later on, much later on through Feast Video. May God use this message today to change your life and transform you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One more time, let's clap our hands to God. We give Him praise. I want to warn you that today we are launching a brand new series entitled Taboo. But here's the warning, okay? This series is going to change your life. It's going to change your family's life. But I also want to tell you that this is going to be a very bloody and very tough series. Today we are going to talk about ancestors, specifically our family ancestors. And the next, next Sunday, we talk about abuse, family abuse. And then the week after that, we talk about addictions. Can you tell the person to your right, Bawal mag absent. That's right. You need to be present in all the talks in order for you to understand what this series is going to be about. But I believe that after this series is done, God is going to free your families from hurts and pains and shackles and chains. That's right. So we got a lot to cover for today, all right? So I, I know you're excited to hear God's Word. How many people are excited? All right, then let's begin. As we come in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Raise both your hands in the air and say this with me. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Holy Spirit, speak to us in a powerful way. Our scriptural verse for today is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 18 to 19. Could you help me read it? Ready, set, go. Do not cling to events of the past 
or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for the new thing I am going to do. It is happening already. You can see it now. Tell the person to your right, you can see it now. Sa lahat ng nahihirapan mag-move on at mag-move forward. This is your verse. Tell the person beside you, mag-move on ka na. God is telling you right now, stop clinging to the past. Stop looking back. You want to know what our problem is? Ask me what? We love clinging to the past. Hirap mag-move on kasi. Why? Because the old means familiar, but the new means unfamiliar, and unfamiliar is always scary. That's the truth. We value predictability over progress. We crave what is predictable, even if what is predictable is painful. I'll be very, very honest with you. This is going to sound harsh to some of you. This is the reason why it's so hard and why you cling to that old boyfriend who is an absolute jerk. Because you're scared that if he ever leaves you, no other guy will choose you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's also the reason why you're probably clinging to that toxic job that is draining the joy out of your life. Because you're scared that if you ever leave this inhumane job, no other company will take you. And that's the truth. That's also the reason why we cling to destructive family cycles that, you know what, will eventually kill your kids and your grandkids. Let me explain that to you. Family cycles are patterns that are passed from one generation to the next generation. I mean, there are so many good family cycles that are being passed on. I've seen a lot of families pass on a culture of forgiveness, kindness, faithfulness, mercy, generosity, and that's pretty much where we want to be, right? That's what we want. But the truth is and the reality is, friends, that there are so much more destructive family cycles that are also being passed down to the next generation, such as envy, greed, unforgiveness, divorce, infidelity, poverty. There's so much more. And despite the pain that all these families that suffer from these family cycles go through, it's shocking that some of them even choose to continue the family drama over the course of many generations. In fact, the Bible preaches something so powerful about this. Stephen says in the book of Acts, you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Stephen knew and recognized that there was a culture of disbelief that was being passed on by his ancestors. Let me share with you my story. My grandfather grew up in a very strict environment. He was, he was, he was always strictly uh, punished in a violent way. Whenever he did something wrong, whenever he said something wrong, whenever he failed, he would always get punished, you know, with, with, with a lot of instruments. So when my grandfather got married and had kids, which was my dad, he practiced the same thing. Whenever my dad would, would do something wrong, my dad would get punished severely. And so when my dad got married as well, and he had us as his kids, guess what? He, 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 he transferred the same thing, the same experience to us kids. He punished us very severely. We had three levels of different punishments. The first level was usually the, the, the common one. If you make a mistake, you know, you get slapped with a glove in the face. That's the first level. The second level gets a little harder. Whenever you do something wrong, slippers would fly and hit you in the mouth. That's the second level. The third level was usually the harshest because whenever you failed at something, you would get the belt. And I'm not talking about the belt nowadays because the belt nowadays are soft. I'm talking about the belt with a buckle with a little circular thing. I tell you, 
I was 13 years old and I had no pajamas that didn't have holes in them. I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm telling you that my dad was bad. I believe my dad was a good guy. But the thing is, what was passed on him, generation after generation, was also being passed down to us. And next month, officially, I become a father by God's grace. My wife is going to give birth September. But here it is. I'm so scared because it's real. Whatever was passed down to my dad that was passed down to us, I'm scared that I have the tendency to lift my hand and might even punish my kid physically. But thank God for community. Thank God for being surrounded by good people because I'm reminded every single day on what is right and what is wrong. And you know what I'm, I'm committing now? I spoke to my wife. This is something we committed to one another. I told myself, with God's help and by God's grace, this cycle breaks with me. This stops now. It will not continue to the next generation. It ends with me. And so I want to ask you today, in your family, do you have a destructive family cycle? that keeps repeating and repeating and repeating itself? Is there a pattern of maybe disrespect, abuse, failure, poverty? If there is, I want you to tell yourself because you have control over your life. You got to tell yourself. Can you do this right now? Can you put your hands over your chest and then say this? Come on, say it. This ends right now this ends right now come on one more time this ends right now in jesus name i pray that every hurt every pain that you have experienced that has been passed down over to your life is now been freed because god is creating something new in your life today can we clap our hands and give god the praise and the gratitude. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my Connecting with God, that's what we're all about. You need God. You need His presence. So keep on listening. You know, this is going to be a tough message. The entire series is going to be tough. So I'm going to ask for your help. That all the enthusiastic people in the house, I need you. I need your enthusiasm. This is going to be a heavy talk. The entire series is going to be heavy. So if you agree to what I'm going to say, you just say, Woohoo! Or, if, or applaud, you know, and, 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 and if, if I, I, I crack a joke and it's not very funny, just laugh anyway, you know. So uh, I need your enthusiasm. So will I, will I, will I get your help? Yes. That, that wasn't very enthusiastic. <laughs> will, will, will I get your help? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Today we're going to talk about, the, you know, about family cycles. Everybody say fam family cycles. And the family cycles get passed on from generation to generation. And what we're going to do this entire month is we're going to break that cycle. Everybody say, break that cycle. And, and Audi was so right. You know, I was, I was think, I think, I'm thinking of this family. The family cycle of this family was greed. Because the father put money as number one. And he used money to manipulate and control his wife and his children. Greed was number one. Money was number one. Here's what happened. He died. And when he died, the children started fighting over the inheritance. Because that's what he passed on. He passed on greed to his children. You know this family? No family dinners. In this family, no birthday celebrations. In this family, no Mother's Day celebrations. Zero. The only thing this family has is money. And then now, money is disappearing. 
and then they'll have nothing. It's horrible to see family cycles in just gripping a family and being passed on from one generation to another. We're going to break it. Everybody say, it ends with me. Whatever cycle that you have, whether it be debt, passing on from Lolo and Lola and parents and now to you, you better say it right now. It ends in my generation. Maybe it is anger or temper. Maybe it is adultery, whatever it is. One more time, everybody say, it ends with me. me. Tell somebody beside you, it ends in my generation. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. ready. Today we're going to talk about, I'm I'm going to begin the talk by by talking about this whole age-old debate between nature and nurture. Everybody say nature Nature. and nurture. What's the difference? The question is this, which is more powerful, nature or nurture? You see, we're going to talk about family cycles and what causes family cycles, nature or nurture. That's what we're going to to talk about. Nature, I'll give you an example. By nature, I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I really am. I, I am so introverted that you leave me in a cafe with a laptop and I'll stay there the whole day. I'm, I, I don't mind. In fact, I enjoy it. That's why I can produce 50 books. I'm an introvert by nature. But by nurture, I have, because of mission, I've thrust myself into a world where I have to lead organizations and speak to thousands. So by nurture, I'm an extrovert. Am I making sense to you? So nature is about your genetic system. Nurture is about your echo system. Nature is what you get before you were born. Nurture is what you get after you were born. Am I making sense? How many of you watch Tarzan? Okay, Tarzan, good. Tarzan is an example of nature and nurture. Nature, he's a man. Nurture, he was raised by apes. So he looks like a man, but he acts like an ape and he talks like an ape and he walks like an ape make sense of course Tarzan is fiction but if you look at recent history you find kids who were left in the jungle and they were raised by animals in India they discovered two girls who were raised up by wolves and they acted like wolves scratching and biting in Uganda There was a five-year-old boy who was raised up by monkeys. A real life Tarzan. In Fiji, you you won't believe this, they discovered a six-year-old boy raised up by chickens. He was pecking on the ground, the six-year-old boy. In the Philippines, they discovered a boy raised up by crocodiles. And he became. Uh, we 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 uh, we need to go on. I decided, you know, I told myself this talk is so heavy. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna try to be funny. That's why. If if it's not too funny, just laugh. Um, today, you know, the Bible talks about how your association affects your action. Can everybody say that? Your association affects. Your action. A A A. Tell somebody beside you. A A A. Your association. And, and, and the Bible is very clear in that. In the book of Proverbs, let, let's turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 13. Why don't you read with me? One, two, three, go. Be with wise men and become wise. Be with evil men and become evil. Don't, don't be too obvious, but from the corner of your eye, look at the person beside you and see if that person is wise or evil. <laughs> wise? A wise, wonderful, wonderful. There's another passage. It's in 1 Corinthians. Why don't we read that together in chapter 15 together? 
bad company ruins good morals. My dear friends, if you've got friends in your life that are drawing you away from God, you, please understand that that's something you don't want. By the way, do you have friends that bring you closer to God? Do you have friends that inspire you to be better every day? If the answer is yes, give God a big hand. That's a gift right there. That is such a gift. And just in case that person is beside you, tell that person, thank you for being in my life. Wow. And by the way, if your friend did not say that to you right now, you know. <laughs> and how many of you are not yet married, but you want to get married? Raise your hand. Really raise it up high and wave and tell God. And, and wave at heaven. W wave at all the saints. Don't you know? Saint Jude, patron saint of the impossible. Come on, just wave. Now, you have to select. I'm just kidding, by the way. You have to select your spouse very well because that is nurture. That is the ecosystem that you will have in your life. Will that spouse bring you closer to fulfilling the purpose of God for your life? Solomon in the Bible did not choose very well his spouse. Spouse says, actually. In, 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 in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3 and 4, it says about Solomon that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Wow. W O W. Wow. I mean, I'm sure husbands have problems remembering anniversaries, right? Can you just imagine this guy? He had a problem remembering names. <laughs> How could he memorize a thousand names? Hi! <laughs> Your wife number 632, right? You are, you know, don't tell me, don't tell me, you are Jamie? No, 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 Jill? Ju Jupiter? Ju 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 Judy? Judai. Juice could die. You're, he's just lost. Now, now here's what it says. Here's what the Bible says. Um, they turned his heart away from the Lord, especially in his old age. They encouraged him to worship their gods instead of trusting completely in the Lord as his father David had done. This, this, is, this is horrible. I, I, I pray that the spouse that you choose will make you a better person. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not talking just about spouse, I'm talking about friends, I'm talking about acquaintances, about people you hang out with. If there are people in your life that you're hanging out with right now, a circle of friends that are pulling you away from God and you know it, this is what you do. You better pull out. You better get out of that circle, strengthen your spiritual life. And when you are strong enough, Dive back into that circle of friends and you do the pulling. You do the bringing, bringing these people closer to God. This is so important. Are there people in your life that are pushing you down? Are there people in your life that are pulling you down and pushing you down? You better stay clear because you want to have an ecosystem, an environment that nurtures your purpose for God. If there is any hindrance that's stopping the grace of God to flow in your life, remove that pride and, and, and being too busy and let Him bless you today. There was this woman who, who came up after the feast and, and she said, Brother Bo, she said, can you pray for my ex-husband? You know, he's, uh, and I, I said, what happened to you? And I said, and she said, you know, my, my ex, he's, he likes math. He likes addition. He, he's not content with one. <laughs> he wants number two, number three, number four. You know, she told me that there was one time in her life where she had, where, where he had four women at the same time. And, 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 she, and it was so horrible. Until one time, one moment when she had evidence of his infidelity. You know, she went up to the guy, to her husband, and says, Who's Patty? And hus the husband said, huh? 
what? what? Whose patty? Uh, uh, the neighborhood dog. Do not deny who is Patty. The, the dog in the neighborhood. The dog. The dog. Do not deny. Here, the evidence was a phone, and on the other line was Patty. Here, your dog is calling. And the husband picked up the phone and he said, Ruff, 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 Ruff. Okay. That was not very enthusiastic. Now that did not happen, by the way. But there was something that she told me that was very interesting. She said, You know, Bo, when we met, I noticed already there was something wrong with his family. Like he was just my boyfriend. I, I found out that his father was a womanizer. And then later on, I found out his grandfather was a womanizer. And then I found out all his uncles were womanizers. And Bo, I have a question. And she asked me this. Is sin inherited? Is sin inherited? Does sin get passed from one generation to another? And I told her this. Sin tendency. Everybody say sin tendency. It's more about nurture than nature. It's more about nurture. And what am I saying? I'm saying the sin culture was passed. You see, your husband grew up in an environment where adultery was as common as brushing teeth. Adultery was so common, it was as common as as natural as snoring. And that's how he grew up. And so, because of and by his free will, he chose to make that family cycle a part of his life. And that woman raised her hand and said, Brother Bo, you mean my husband chose that? And I said, absolutely. The greatest gift that God has given to us next to Jesus is our free will. And everybody say free will. And, and the person I was talking to, you know, she said, no, Brother Bo, the second greatest gift is Mama Mary. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know. But okay, this, the third greatest gift that God has given to us is free will. Her husband was a St. Joseph devotee. Brother Bo, no, uh, number three is St. Joseph. Okay, let's disqualify all the people in heaven right now. That's the greatest gift that God has ever given us is your free will. Your decision, the ability to decide. Everybody say the ability to decide. Whether you will repeat the family cycle or not. We're going to go through some scripture verses because some of these scripture verses are very difficult to understand. In Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7, it says, let's read together. Our ancestors sinned and are no more and we bear their punishment. So who sinned? Our ancestors. Who gets punished? Uh oh. Isn't that unfair? I'll give you another passage from the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Let's read that together. And when I punish people for their sins, read it out, out loud. The punishment continues upon the children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. Ouch. You mean to tell me it gets passed on? I'm going to say it again. Let, can I explain this? Can I? It's the nurture that gets passed on. It's the culture of sin that pa gets passed on. The, the influence is in two levels. How many? Two levels. The first level is the practical level where basically an example is set. Everybody say example. That's what happens. A kid grows up in a family of greed and the example of greed happens again and again. And guess what? That child grows up and, and says, well, this must be the normal way to live. Gre be greedy. 
Or if a child grows up where, where there is infidelity, everybody is unfaithful. And so the child grows up and says, well, this is probably the life that I'm supposed to live because this is how people... In the 1990s, 1991, you know when I look at you, some of you, you're not even born in 1991. In 1991, there was this popular athlete, very popular. He said this to the journalist, I'm not paid to be a role model. I'm paid to wreak havoc in the basketball court. And, and this became a Nike ad. You see, I, I knew it, nobody knows. <laughs> you know, this guy, in one sense, he's correct. He's correct. He's not paid to be a role model. He's, he's paid to be an athlete. But in another sense, he's wrong. Ask me why. If you're alive on planet Earth, if you're breathing, if you're existing, guess what? You have no choice. You are a role model. There are people around you and they will be influenced by your life, by your example. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You are. Now, if you're a star, if you're a at great athlete, if you're an actor or whatever, your influence is bigger. But even if you're not, if you're a normal human being, and, 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 and guess what? Proximity is power. The people closest to you, they will be influenced. If you're a parent, if you're an uncle, if you're an aunt, if you're an older brother, if you're an old, older sister, I want you to know you have the strongest, most powerful influence on the younger generation in your house, in your home, in your family. You set an example. You're a role model. But it, it's not only on the practical level, it's also on, on the second level. It's what I call the spiritual level. Everybody say spiritual level. That we are all, and, and can I shock you? This is shocking. What I'm going to say is shocking. Are you ready to be shocked? Tell somebody beside you, get ready to be shocked. You may have not heard this before, but here's the truth. We're all interconnected. My soul is linked to your soul. And so what I do and what you do, we affect each other. Guess what? This is my belief. Ask me what? Everybody say, I'm listening. Every thought and every word and every deed that comes out, that flows out of my life, whether good or bad, will have an impact on every human being on planet Earth. How I live my life now affects people that I've never met or I will never meet across the globe. It will affect Africans living in Africa and Alaskans living in Alaska. This is the truth. Imagine a pebble falling on the pond. That's me. That's me. I'm the pebble. But there's a rippling effect because we are linked together. I'm going to read you some passages. Um, the one in... The one in... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Let's read together. Just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. It is one, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. I'm the hand, but I'm connected to the arm, and the arm is connected to the shoulder. We're all linked. You know, a child that does not know, does not know that his father is committing adultery because the father is very good at keeping his sin. The son, the daughter does not know, but they sense it in their spirit. And there is a damage being done because of the, because of the sin being committed. I, I hope I'm, I'm, making, I'm making sense to you that you're, you're, there is an umbilical cord, a spiritual umbilical cord. Can everybody stand up? Can everybody stand up? There is a spiritual umbilical cord connected between you and the people in your life. And proximity is power. Your biggest influence are the people in your home and in your family how you live, your, your most private thoughts affect the people around you. You know, people say this, oh, this is my life, I own my life, 
and I can do what I want to do with my life. And that's how they justify their sins, whatever sins that is, whether it be abortion or whether it be um, whatever. You know, just this is my life. I, I'm not harming anyone. Yes, you are. Because we're all linked. We're all linked. What we're going to do to it right now, this is the most important part of the talk. We're going to do two things. Number two, we're going to decide that the family cycle that's destroying your family will stop with you. Everybody say, choose. A woman came up to me one talk and after a feast and she said, Brother Bo, my father, we called him the Incredible Hulk. Not because he was big, but because he was always angry. He would scream. You know, when, 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 not, when something goes wrong, when, when, you know, he'll just scream and plates will fly. Books will fly in the air. There was one, once we had to rush my brother to the hospital because my father threw a chair at him. The Incredible Hulk. And then she said this, Brother Bo, please pray for me because I'm now a mother and my kids call me the She-Hulk. Brother Bo, I mean, I've inherited the anger from my father. And I blame my father for what's happening to me. And I told her this, inherit is too strong a word. Here's what happened. When you were growing up, you saw your father get angry in that violent way. And that again and again and again, it happened. And repetition is the mother of all skill. So what happened is it got imprinted into your subconscious. And so now during the heat of the moment, when, when, when your kids become unruly, you know, in the heat of the moment, your subconscious ex gets expressed and, and you, you do what, what you saw. But never blame it on your father. He influenced your anger, that's true. But you see, when you blame is a loser's game. When you blame someone of what's happening in your life, you're abdicating your power to change. When you're saying it's his fault, you know what you're saying? He's the one who can change me. No one can change you except God and you. You and God together. And I said, you chose to follow your father. You can also re-choose and say, I'm not going to follow my father. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. Everybody say, God is in me. That means the greatest force in the universe is in you. And you can choose. You can choose. Do you understand me? There was a father, an alcoholic father, who had twin sons. And he beat them up to pulp. He was a horrible man. A bum, jobless. One of the twin brothers grew up and became exactly like his father. Exactly. Bum, alcoholic, broken family. The other twin brother grew up and became the most amazing human being beautiful, lovely family, successful entrepreneur, serves in church. What happened? Same father, same horrible father. One becomes exactly like him, a horrible man. The other one becomes a servant of God. What happened? It's called free will. It's called choice. It's called you make the decision in your life. Will you repeat the family cycle or will you say, it ends here? It ends here. God is starting a new thing. God is starting a new thing. God is starting a new thing in your life. 
We're going to pray together the prayer for the healing of the family tree. That's what we're going to do. And I've placed it on the screen, but I want you to pray this with all your heart and a miracle will happen today. A great miracle will happen to your family. Whatever horrible family cycle that you're dealing with right now, maybe it's poverty. Your grandparents and your parents have always been in poverty. Or maybe it's pride and conflict. They've always been fighting and fighting and fighting. And now you want to end it. We're going to be praying right now for the release and the freedom of your family. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. If you can just lift up your hands as a symbol. If this is only, I mean, only if you're okay with this. And surrender your family to God. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Father, I open my whole family. Past, present, and future. To your healing love. I receive your unconditional mercy for all the sins of my entire family, living or dead. I receive your total healing for all the harm caused by the sins of my parents and grandparents, all their siblings and those before them. I receive your powerful restoration for the damages caused by the failures of my family, living or dead. I receive your glorious victory and total freedom over all bondages in my family. I receive your complete protection over every member of my family and by the power of Jesus at work in me I forgive everyone especially family members living or dead who have hurt me I consecrate my entire family to you Jesus especially dedicating our children and grandchildren and with all my heart I declare as for me and my household we will serve the Lord as for me and my household we will serve the Lord as for me and my household we will serve
want to pray for you. If you could lift up your Naveen to God's love, maybe from your wallet or from your phone. And, and if you didn't bring it with you, that's fine. Lift up all the dreams in your heart. And just everybody say, Jesus, today I declare my trust in you. You're working in my soul and in my life and in my future. I surrender all my needs, all my burdens, all my worries, all my fears, all my dreams. You are starting a new thing in my life, in my family, in my generation. And I declare my dreams will come true. Amen. Thank you so much for this opportunity that you're giving me to enter your home, to enter your heart. It is such an honor. Thank you. God bless. You know what? I, I want you not only to be watching this show, I want you to draw in and be part of our family, be part of this ministry. And here's how, here's what I'm going to, I want you to keep on praying for us. I want you to tell the world about this, about this show. And I want you to partner with me. You know, for any amount whatsoever that you will give this ministry, I'll give you a gift. I will, I will say thank you by sending you the message that you just heard, uh, the first talk of our series, Taboo. And, and um, for 2,000 pesos or more, I will give you not only the first message, but the entire series in DVD here, uh, Taboo, all the talks plus my book, Stop Hidden Addictions. And uh, both together will be such a power package, a resource I want to put in your hands. You, for those of you who want to upgrade to be a monthly giver here in Kerygma TV, please tell us and uh, get you know, you, the contact details are on the screen. Do contact us and tell us, yes, Brother Bo, I want to give more. I, I want to upgrade and, and be a monthly giver. Thank you so much. We need you to be able to bless the world. And we need you to go out. That this, There are so many spiritually hungry people that need God and need God's love. I want to thank you so much again. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.